Eric Grotebois, EPGD Attorneys at Law. So what we're talking about here is when you're starting a business, a lot is gonna go into the branding, right? Um, and a lot of times the name of the company will also be the brand or it doesn't have to be that way, right? So for example, Sprite is a soft drink brand owned by Coca-Cola, that's just an example. Uh, but a lot of times for small businesses, the name of your LLC or the name of your corporation is going to end up also being the name of your brand, what you sell. So I'll give an example. Our brand is EPGD Attorneys at Law PA. Now we also registered EPGD Business Law, EPGD Law, EPGD Trust and Estates. And for each of those, what we did is we actually filed a trademark registration with the USPTO, that's the United States Patent and Trademark Office, and we are getting a federal nationwide trademark. And by the way, Fun fact, you can only use the little R with a circle if you have a federal trademark registration. So if you're just like working with your graphic designer and you're like, yeah, why don't you put the R in there? That can actually be used against you in the future to deny any trademark application that you do. So be careful, don't use the R unless you already have a registration. So what happened in the story, and I just did a one minute video on it, is my client comes to us after they've already started their branding, they've paid their graphic designer, they've set up their company, they've got their Instagram, and we do a trademark search for them as part of our process, and we say, oh guys, we think we found a conflict. And sure enough, there's another business that's already in business that does something similar enough and with a similar enough name to where we tell our clients, listen, we can proceed, but it's probably gonna get rejected by the trademark office, and that's gonna be in six months. Um, and then if you keep going anyways, at any point you might get a cease and desist letter or they might skip the cease and desist letter and they might just sue you in federal court for federal trademark infringement. Um, so maybe if we are really dead set on this name, we could reach out to that other company and maybe see if we could enter into what's called a coexistence agreement, which basically means we're gonna agree with them that we're all gonna get along. So my, like I said, my client is doing something different enough to maybe we could put it in writing, sign a contract that says, we promise we won't compete with your business, with your customers, and we'll keep our branding and our logos and our design and how we position ourselves in the market different enough to where it's gonna be obvious to people. Um, and if they're willing to cooperate, which they might do just because they're nice, or they might sell that right, they might say, okay, we'll do a coexistence agreement with you for a million dollars or for $10,000 or for whatever it is they negotiate. Okay, and, and I, I don't have a crystal ball. I, I don't know what the future is, so I don't know what's gonna end up happening. So I say to my client, you know, the safest option could be to rebrand. Um, and he gets mad and he's like, well, I've already spent all this money. I've already got an Instagram account. I've already paid the graphic designers. I already set up the business. I already got the, the business cards. I already, you know, have the website. And I said, Listen, everything you're saying I get and I understand as a business owner, like when you spend money and if you feel like you're wasting money. But what I really want to tell the guy, and I didn't say this, but what I really want to tell him, I'm going to tell all you guys, is he should have come to me first, right? So I'm telling all of you out there, if you're thinking of starting a business and you're thinking of starting a branding for whatever it is, do a trademark search before you invest all that time and money. So just use round numbers. It might cost $1,000 to do a detailed trademark search where uh, a professional company or a lawyer is gonna go and look. And, and a lot of times we, we check not just the federal registry, we might check all the different states. We, we might look at all, like, and if you've ever seen one of these reports that some of these companies will produce, it'll be a couple thousand pages. And they'll look at every, every country, every state of the United States, because remember, every state has their own uh, LLC and corporation registry and has its own trademark registry. So there are individual state trademarks in addition to the federal trademark. And the real test here is if you can find another company that pre-exists your company doing something similar enough. All right, so obviously a lot to unpack here, but the point is before you get all gung-ho on getting the graphic designers and the website and the Instagram and everything, consider doing your own due diligence. Now, it might be as easy as going on Google at which point one of the other partners chimes in, oh yeah, I did my own Google search and I did find that other company, but I didn't think it was important, so I didn't tell anybody. So apparently they did do a little bit of due diligence and they could have stopped themselves before they went too far down the rabbit hole. All right guys, my name is Eric Rodebois, EPGD Attorneys at Law. Um, in fact, trademarks and branding is one of my favorite topics, so um, give me a call if you have any questions. Bye.